Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. I invite you now to hear the word with open ears, an open mind, and an open heart. So on the way to Jerusalem, he passed through between Samaria and Galilee. As he was coming into a certain village, ten lepers met him standing at a distance. They raised up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, show us mercy. When he saw, he told them, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they were leaving, they were cleansed. Now one of them, seeing that he had been healed, returned, praising God with a loud voice. He fell down on his face at his feet, thanking him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus answered, weren't ten clean? So where are the nine? Nobody was found returning to give praise to God except for this foreigner. So he told him, rise up, go, your faith has saved you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Two guys were walking through a field one day and all of a sudden they saw this enraged bull. And so they take off and they're running as fast as they can to the nearest fence. They're going to try to jump it, but the bull is in, you know, hot pursuit. And so they realize that the bull is catching up on them and they are not going to make it to the fence. And so one of the buddies starts yelling at the other. He says, you got to start praying, John. Pray, John, pray. And John says, but I, I can't pray. I've never prayed in public before. And his buddy says, listen, th there's no time to argue. You've got to start praying. That bull is right on our heels. He's about to catch us. And so John is panting and he's breathing heavy and he says, okay, I'll pray the only prayer I ever heard. Oh Lord, for what we are about to receive, make us truly thankful. <laughs> That's an oldie but a goodie. Um, I don't know, I don't know if that prayer helped John and his buddy, but it does point out the fact that in any and all circumstances, gratitude, Gratitude is a critical part of our life. The writer of the book of Colossians says this. He says, be thankful people. Whatever you do, whether in speech or action, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to God through the Father, God the Father through him. You see, the, Colossians says that Jesus gave his life for us and that's a debt that we can't pay. Uh, we didn't deserve that gift, and we could never pay it back. All we can do is be grateful for God's gift to us in Christ and pay that gift forward. And as you do that, your life begins to change. Your life actually begins to start to look like the life of Christ. It will transform you from the inside out. You become compassionate like Christ. You become kind like Christ. You become humble like Christ. You're going to be gentle like Christ. You're going to be patient with others uh, when they get on your nerves, just like Christ was. You're going to be tolerant of other people. You're going to forgive people when they do hurt you. And, and if you could describe that kind of a life, that kind of a Christ-like, Christ-centered life, that word would, if you could sum all that up in one word, it would be the word generosity. It would be what? It would be generosity. Now, often we think about generosity only in terms of our money, and, and that is part, part of it, and, and it is important. We're certainly going to talk about being generous with our financial gifts later on in this series. But if you have ever known anyone who was truly generous, you know that it went well beyond their financial gifts. Uh, generosity is the opposite of selfishness. It's the opposite of selfishness. Living the kind of life that Christ lived requires us to put our ego and our pride and our desires to the side. Now, we all know that that ain't easy. Amen? It's not easy to put our own selfish desires to the side and do something and be giving. Uh, many years ago, Northwestern U University had a life-saving team, and they would help passengers uh, when boats had difficulty on Lake Michigan. Well, on September 8th of 1860, there was this monster storm. And during the storm, uh, another ship crashed into the Lady Elgin, and she sank. Uh, 500 passengers were on board the ship. 
uh, and they were floating around on pieces of debris there in the water. Only 160 people survived, and, and 18 of them survived because a young seminary student named Edward Spencer personally rescued them. He just kept plunging himself back into the raging waters during the storm and pulling people out, as many as he could find. Spencer was hurt so badly by the wreckage pummeling his body that he spent the rest of his life in a wheelchair and had to drop out of seminary. He never became a minister. So how many of those 18 people do you think came to Spencer and said thanks? Not a single one. Not a single one. And that's the story in our gospel reading today, isn't it? Ten men suffering with leprosy come to Jesus, and nine were Jews just like him. One was a much-hated Samaritan, and just as Pete did, you were supposed to spit when you said Samaritan. Um, all of these guys beg Jesus to have pity on them and to heal them, and he does. He sends them to the priests, and as they're on their way, they are healed. But how many of them came back? Well, one more than came back to Spencer. Only one came back to profess his undying devotion to God. Only one, an outcast among outcasts, returned to say thank you. Now, why only one? Well, I think it's pretty difficult for all of us to remember to say thanks. It's, it's hard enough to be thankful when we're having a tough time with things. Amen? Amen. It's hard enough to be thankful when we're having a rough go of it. And it's really hard, I think it's even harder, to remember to say thanks when we're doing really well. Because we are tempted when we're doing really well to take all the credit for all of God's blessings. Amen? When we are comfortable, we pat ourselves on the back and we forget that God is the source of each and every blessing. And God deserves our gratitude. A thankful life is a generous life. Uh, one of the foundations of our Sunrise campaign is this, and some of you have heard this before. Generosity is grounded in gratitude. Can we say that together? Generosity is grounded in gratitude. And that's to say when we are thankful to God for God's blessings, we naturally become generous people. And we have so much to be thankful for as a church family. Amen? Amen. Y'all don't sound convinced. Y'all hate our church. I can already tell. Golly. We have so much to be thankful for as a church family. Amen? Amen. 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 That's better. I mean, we live in a fantastic community. Amen? Amen? I mean, what a joy it is to live in Bryant. I love, love Bryant. It's vibrant. It's growing. And so do me a favor and grab a pen, and I want you to write down a number on your traveler's companion. All right? I'll give you just about two seconds to do that. So it's not A675309, that's another number. But um, it does have an 8 and a 5 in it. But um, write this number down. The number is 8,577. 8,577. 8,577. Say it with me. 8,577. That is the number of people expected to move to our community in the next Five years. How many years? Five, Five years. 8,577. Now, many of those families are going to be looking for a church home. And 6% of Americans across the board say that they are United Methodist. Which means that 500 of those people moving to Bryant are already United Methodist. Amen? And some of them are like some of you were. They're already Methodist. They just don't know it yet. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Yeah. What an opportunity. What an opportunity. God has set before us and these people who were moving to our community. And so that's why I'm thankful also for God's vision of, for our church family. Our vision is to make a home for all of God's children. Can we say that together? It's to make a home for all of God's children. I didn't hear everybody say that. Let's try one more time. To make a home for all of God's children. And if we do what God is calling us to do, if we rise to the need that is coming to us in these 8577 people, we will need to start new worship opportunities. 
We will need to launch new missions and new ministries out of our church family. And in Jesus' name, we will change lives for the better. I am so thankful also for the pioneers who came before us. Amen? I'm so thankful. That's, that's Don L. Rod's great-great-grandpappy or something. I don't know. I'm so thankful for those pioneers who came before us. The, the unnamed Methodist circuit rider who uh, came with some families and founded our church family in the 1850s. The uh, pastors like H.H. H. Watson and Bishop Andrew Hunter and Daryl Bone, amen, and Guy Downing and Paul Barrington and Charles Murray and Bud Reeves and uh, insert your favorite preacher if I didn't name him there, and all of the others who paved the way for our ministry today. I am so thankful for families, the families like the Elrods, the Boones, Boswells, Browns, and Bowies, and Evanses, amen, who came before us, who came before us and prepared a church home for you and for me. I'm so thankful for all of the lay people who are now long gone, but who prayed for us even before we were born. Because we stand on their shoulders. I'm also thankful for our church's pioneering spirit. You know, we were founded by pioneers. Amen? We were founded by pioneers. And that same spirit is with us today. We were, we were here before Bryant was ever even close to being Bryant. We were one of the very first United Methodist churches in the state to have a family life center. We were one of the first United Methodist churches in, a, in the state to have a church website. And I used to go visit it. It was blue. And it, it, when you loaded it on, into your Netscape browser, it played a MIDI file of Pass It On. Amen? Some of y'all remember that. We were one of the very first United Methodist churches in the state to launch a contemporary worship service. We were one of the first United Methodist churches in the state to have a praise band. We were one of the first United Methodist churches in the state to utilize a screen in worship. But you know and I know that blazing a trail is never easy. Amen? It's never easy. The biggest church fight we ever had, none of y'all remember. Because it was, it was over moving the church from where the cemetery is now up to where our old church is. Back, and that was back in the 1870s. That's the biggest church fight we ever had. Led to the split of the church. But it has been worth it. Blazing these trails have been worth it. Did you know that in the last 25 years, since we did all of these building projects, almost 700 people have professed their faith in Jesus Christ through our church family. And somebody better say amen to that. Amen. Almost 700 people. That is why we built these buildings. That's the only reason, the only reason, why we built any of these buildings. Amen? Amen? That was the reason they were put in. And that is why they are in such bad need of renovation today. Because we have used them for that purpose and we have accomplished that mission for which we built them. The Sunrise Campaign is about getting God's house back in order for a new dawn in the life of our church family. And so if you haven't started already, and I know some of you have, but if you haven't started already, I want to invite you to start praying now. And start by praying for those 8,577 people who will be moving to our, church, uh, to our church vicinity in the next five years. Pray for the lives who will be changed by our church family over the next 25 years. And pray the sunrise prayer, Lord, what do you want to do through me? Can you say that with me? Lord, what do you want to do through me? And we know, because we've, many of us have done this before, that not all of us, not all of us will be able to give an equal share. But we can all make an equal sacrifice. Generosity is grounded in gratitude. And so I, I want to ask you, what are you thankful for today? What are you thankful for? Our children have already answered that question. We have some pictures. Uh, can you, I, I, I don't think I labeled those for you, Anthony, but we're, we'll see some of them. Our children have already answered that question by completing some gratitude cards. They've, 
they've uh, written what they are thankful for about our church family. And, and most of them say that they are thankful because they learn about who Jesus is and who God is through our ministries here at First Avenue Church of Rome. You can see all of their cards this morning down in the church library as you, as you head back that way after the service. And I want to invite you to do the same thing. You'll take your card, take your, the card that you were handed this morning when you came in. This is, this is a gratitude card. Take it out right now. Right now. Right now. Right. It's okay. We'll show the picture some more. Uh, take it out. And answer that question, what am I most thankful for? What am I most thankful for? Take a moment to write that down. And then take a moment to write down what I love about my church family is. Fill in the blank. What do you love most about your church family? What do you love most about your church family? We're going to have a time to pray. In just a moment, I'm going to ask Greg to come. and uh, We're going to play our last uh, hymn as a, song, as a prayer song. This morning. And I want to invite you to come down and bring your card. Bring your, bring your gratitude card and lay it on the altar. And if you'd like to pray and, and have a time to give God thanks, you're welcome to do that uh, as you lay your card down. And uh, as we sing, we'll, uh, we'll sing softly and prayerfully and, and take, take enough time, take whatever time you need to fill out your card and then come and pray. And uh, when we're done, uh, we have a family who's going to join our church family this morning. So just return to your seats and we'll welcome them as well. Would you pray with me? God, we do have so many things to be thankful for today. For the blessings of friends and fellowship, fun, and spiritual growth. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifices that others made on our behalf. We know that they are sacrifices that we could never pay back. And so, God, we pray that over the coming weeks, you will help us to look ahead. So that we can sacrifice for others. Others whom we may even never meet, but who will know the same love that we have known through this church family and by your grace. We pray this in Jesus' name and the people of God's sake.